The Eight Nights of Hanukkah by Leslie Kimmelman and illustrated by Gayla Bernstein. Lady Sadie called the Eight Nights of Hanukkah together. Tonight is the last night of Hanukkah. I invited the entire kingdom to celebrate with us, but alas, a dastardly dragon named Dreadful is roaming the countryside, interrupting the party preparations. My children, I am counting on you to fix things with some deeds of awesome kindness and stupendous bravery. Challenge accepted, said the knights. I will tame the dragon, said Sir Isabella. Stupendous bravery is my specialty, added Sir Rugelach with his mouth full of cookies. Bye, Mommy, said Sir Henry. Off the knights rode. The first night, Sir Alex cantered into a village on his trusty steed. Hark, he claimed, methinks I hear a crying child. He jumped from the horse and crouched down beside the boy. What be the matter, young lad, he asked. The dragon scorched my cradle, the boy sniffed. The only Hebrew letter left is none, which means I always lose. I will make you a new dreidel, Sir Alex said, picking up a piece of wood. He carved a nun first, then gimel, hay, and shin on the other sides. The letters stand for Neskadol Hayasham, which means a great miracle happened there. The boy spun the dreidel. Thanks, he shouted happily. Gimel is the best letter of all. It is a miracle. Sir Alex waved as he sped off. Happy Hanukkah, young lad. I shall see you tonight. Meanwhile, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugelach searched high and low for Dreadful. Put a thump, put a thump. The second night, Sir Gabriel galloped across the plains on a silver stallion. Hark, he exclaimed, methinks I hear a damsel in distress. A woman was wailing over an enormous pile of potatoes. Why do you weep, fair lady? asked the knight. I must peel these potatoes to make Hanukkah lattes for the town folk tonight. She replied, but alas and alack, the dragon has scared off my helpers. Sir Gabriel pitched right in. Side by side, they peeled and grated. My work here is done, announced Sir Gabriel, and now you have plenty of potatoes for a mountain of lattes. Meanwhile, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugelach looked north, south, east, and west. Show your face, you fire-breathing bully, shouted Sir Rugelach. Please, added Sir Isabella but still no dragon. Mmm. The third night, Sir Margaret made her way to the sweet-smelling fruit orchard. Hark, methinks I see some fat, sad-faced field hands, Sir Margaret exclaimed. What ails you, fair people? We need apples for applesauce for the Hanukkah latkes, answered a young maiden. But when we climb the trees to pick them, exclaimed the young man, the dragon flies low, and poof, baked apples. Fear not, Sir Margaret replied. My long and noble lance can knock down the fruit you seek. Many baskets of apples later, Sir Margaret was on her way. My work here is done, she called back. I will see you when the sun goes down. Meanwhile, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugelach kept coming after the dragon. They gave chase and got chased, dodging smoke and fire. Sir Julian, the fourth knight, formed the mitzvah of bringing chicken soup to the sick and keeping company with the lonely. The soup was delicious, the talk was lively, the jokes were funny. Everyone felt better right away because laughter is the best medicine. Just in time for the party, they agreed happily. Helpip wanted to read the sign Sir Lily, the fifth night, saw in a bakery window. We made dozens of Hanukkah donuts for the celebration, complained the chief baker. Then Dreadful swooped down and gobbled every one. Worrieth not, said Sir Lily. She worked alongside the bakers all day long, making chulkanayot, then braised a hot stove, sizzling oil, and sticky, drippy jam. Those things are nothing at all to a knight such as I, said Sir Lily modestly. The sixth night, Sir Henry, rode out with the others. Then he turned his horse around and trotted back to the castle. Why do you not venture out to do deeds of awesome kindness and stupendous bravery? asked Lady Sadie. I stay in and do acts of awesome kindness and stupendous bravery, answered Sir Henry. The goodly Sir Henry cleaned the castle till it gleamed. He swept the drawbridge and chased away two ferocious looking lizards. Stupendous bravery. 
and brought Lady Sadie a cup of hot tea and a fluffy pillow for her tired feet. Awesome kindness. Meanwhile, the seventh and eighth nights, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugalach were feeling discouraged. They just couldn't catch that dragon. They sat, thinking. The air got warmer and warmer. Uh-oh, dreadful. But you're just a baby dragon, exclaimed Sir Isabella. And my name isn't dreadful, the dragon sniffed. It's Rosie. So Rosie was invited to the Hanukkah celebration. The sun sank in the sky, and one by one the knights returned home from their big round table. The eight knights of Hanukkah exchanged tales of spectacular deeds and daring do. Before long, guests began to arrive. Never had the round table been graced by so many heroic knights, nor the castle grounds with so much merrymaking. Whoosh! Rosie lit the Hanukkah candles. It was a most excellent Hanukkah. The eight nights of Hanukkah had lit up the darkness of the world with the bright light of kindness. Shine on, good nights. Shine on.